And we've got the green flag waving for Gunnar Jeanette. And he does just that, guns it over the crest down towards Andretti for the first time. And the McLarens following him on. And this, one of the early 917s, and of course, Looking forward to getting some words of wisdom. Charles Nurberg has just joined us here in the booth. Delighted to have him on board. I've watched him race. I'll let him catch his breath because he's just rushed up here. My producer has hustled him in, as she should. But great to have him on board because he's just literally popped out of the car. He was in the last group, pretty much. Uh, but a name that is familiar both to me and to historic fans around the world. Charles Nurberg, welcome to the commentary booth. Welcome to the Rolex reunion yet again. An event I know you love uh, and have a lot of passion for. First and foremost, how is it out there? Well, the, you know the track's got new pavement. It's it's kind of it's kind of you know it's kind of rubbering in. Uh, you know it was pretty diabolical last weekend, but <laughs> there's a few more grooves out there now. Uh, you know one and two are still. You got to pick your place in one and two. Um, all in all, I mean the grip services. I think it's coming in really well. I just mentioned that actually. What, while you were coming up, I was just talking about the fact that um, why we're doing two base laps for the simple reason that the new surface doesn't catch people out. But there are nuances, there always are. There's going to be bumps that, that, that um, or bumps that have gone now that you probably were used to going, oh, this is my breaking point. Suddenly it's disappeared. Uh, you might get grip that you didn't expect to grip in certain places, and you might be able to go deeper in certain places. Is that something you found? Yeah, I think in general, um, you know, the old track was the old track, and it was just... You know, I mean, I think this is okay to say on the air. It was smooth as a baby's ass. Yeah. And, um, you know, so it's uh, everybody was ready for a new surface. I think, frankly, everybody thought it would be quicker right off the bat than it is. But it is definitely quicker, and it's definitely, groove, you know, it's definitely rubbering in. And I think, I think it's going to, you know, I think it bodes well for the future of Laguna Seca for sure. You know, as we look at Zach Brand, um, in a McLaren, finally. Uh, he's going to be in a Williams later. But, um, you know, I was just explaining the Bruce and Denny show as it was back then. Bruce McLaren, of course, the owner and inventor of McLaren Racing, went to England, made his fame. Formula One, we all know the story. Zach now running the team. Um, but it really was Can-Am that, in some ways, to a bigger audience where Bruce McLaren really made his name. Yes. Well, you know, uh, it, uh, 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 you're going to have to shut me up periodically. <laughs> no, not at all. You're I here a, to talk. I have a lot of, I'm old enough to have a lot of stories. Come on. My dad actually bought the second McLaren Elva customer car that was built. Wow. Uh, it came into the States in 67, and uh, he had a, a fella driving with, uh, with him at that time, uh, Joe Starkey, who won the uh, uh, A-Sports Racing SCCA National Championship at Daytona with the car. And... Uh, my dad raced it some, and so my history with McLaren goes really way back to the beginnings of the customer cars, and uh, so I have a real fondness for McLaren. I uh, actually, in this race, one of the cars out there I used to race when I was when I was in my 20s, and uh, it's the <laughs> car that Chris McAllister, my good friend Chris McAllister yep. Yep. from yep. Indianapolis, is driving, and uh, that was a uh, that was a team car. And uh, we bought it from Commander Motor Homes and uh, raced it for several years. And uh, I'll show, I, I got some more stories about it, but you probably have some other questions. Well, I, I mean, I, you just kind of put your finger on it. I mean, this is a fraternity like no other. These are, these are your lifelong friends out there. Yeah, absolutely. I've known Zach since uh, we raced in Formula Atlantic together in the Pro, Pro, you know, Pro Atlantic Series back in the early 90s. So, uh, you know, these guys, we go back a long way. and. You know, uh, we don't give each other a lot of quarter on the racetrack, but but we're really good friends off of it. Charles, you've raced so many different uh, cars. Is there anyone that you really had to just like get out of the car and go, what the heck have I got to do to, to get you know, to muscle this thing around? Because I don't get it yet. I mean, you'll get on top of it eventually, but is there a bit of car, a historic car, that you've gone, wow, I've got to I've got to do some homework here? Well, the M8F was a big step up when I got into it, so I have to say, I mean. The, f the power was ferocious, the acceleration was ferocious, and, and so that, that car definitely got my attention every time I got in it. It was a well, it was a, you know, obviously a well-designed car. It was, you know, it was very uh, dominant in the uh, Can-Am series, of course, until the, 
you know, the, the Porsche Panzers came along. But uh, it was a good car. It was just, you know, it was for, I think Mario, I think Zach told me that Mario Andretti told him that these were the only cars that he ever drove that just never stopped accelerating. <laughs> yeah, that's probably no word of a, of a lie there.